Hey everyone, welcome back to Homegrown Passion. Today we're going to be in the high tunnel because we've kind of let everything go. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to be doing in here with the strawberries. So the first thing I'm going to do today is fill up my tank. See, I got it here in place. I do have some weeds growing through my uh, black ground cover here. And even though they're growing through there, it's easy to pull them because they can't establish their root system. So it's easy to pull them up and get them thrown out of here. So that's going to be my first job is clean up the aisles and get some of the grasses out of here. So one of the things I noticed about my strawberries here, these guys up here were growing really nice and all the other rows were doing pretty good, but down here, not so well. So I hadn't been in here when the water had been on, you know, because we have the timer on with the dosatron system, so it comes on like four times a day. Finally today, I was in here when the water came on and oh my gosh, it was squirting out everywhere. So Doug came and cut the piece off that was leaking and repaired it for me. So now I know why they weren't growing good. As I mentioned before, the buckets that had five or six plants in them this year, did terrible compared to the ones with only the three. So don't crowd them too much. The plants um, spread out better and they give you much better fruit. And I got a lot of dead leaves in here. So really good idea to put less plants in. Well, as you can see here, we still have some good strawberries coming along. So I have the runners super long here and I want to see if I can get the production up for another month because, you know, being here in the high tunnel and being in um, Ohio, I should be able to keep this going until the middle of October, beginning of November. So we just redid the nutrients, so I'm going to go through all these runners and lop them off and see if I can get my production back up again. So last year we had a lot of tomatoes growing in here, and I thought I got them all cleaned up, but we got some seeds here and there, and now I got tomato plants growing everywhere. Should have pulled these sooner, but I'm going to get these out of here with the tank and clean this place up. So here are the grow bags that we did. Went through and thought I got most of the strawberries, but here's one I forgot. I think next year we're going to do more of the grow bags because there's a lot less weeds in them, the strawberries stay a lot cleaner, and the plants just seem much happier. And I was just using the uh, vermiculite in here, and it seems to be a good combination. Since the perlite vermiculite mixture did so well in the grow bags this year, and the soil not so well in the buckets here, I think next year I'm gonna do more of the perlite with just a little bit of vermiculite in them, and I think that's gonna be a good combination for the strawberries to keep their roots dry but keep enough moisture in them so they do produce a lot for us. So here are the peppers and tomatoes I planted in here. They're all on the strawberry formula. I thought top dressing them with a top dress fertilizer would really help keep them going and I'd have a nice crop. Another fail. So next year we're going to not put any peppers, tomatoes, any other things in here except strawberries. I'm going to have six rows of strawberries through here and that's it. So when Doug did the rail system for me, I thought, yeah, maybe it was a little too high, but now after using it for two years, it's perfect height. My sister came out today to help me out, and she's just a tad bit shorter than I am, and it was so easy for her to work with all this stuff. It's just right here. You don't know bending in there or anything. We just pushed a cart on through and was able to harvest. So really happy with this height, even though it looks a little tall. I think it's a little bit better. So talking about pushing the cart through and harvesting strawberries, I actually got 15 pounds today between what Crean and I harvested. So not too bad for kind of letting these guys go. So here are the runners that I let go, which I probably shouldn't have. Look at these guys, they're crazy. I did get a few strawberries off of them here and there, but lately they haven't been doing anything. So I'm going to take the loppers and just cut these guys all right off so the plants put more energy up to the top and to the fruit production. So my idea is to take these rusty old loppers that we've had forever and I'm going to lop these off probably right at bucket level all the way through, make another big mess, but it should be easy to clean up. I can just take a rake and pull it all up front and throw it in the tank there and get all these off of here, like I said, and get the uh, energy back up to our plants. So let's see how this is going to work. Oh yeah, that's going to be easy. Put the ones I don't hit the plant or the bucket. So I'll just get these all lopped off. here. They're not even. I don't think it's going to be a big deal. Wow, look at all the foliage on here. A lot of energy being wasted on these runners. Oh, look, there is one strawberry on a runner there. Not too bad looking. So I'll save him. OK, 
Okay, well, I'm just going to keep on going. So if you guys have been watching our YouTube videos, you know this is basically our second year of doing strawberries. So I'm still learning a lot, and you guys have given me some good questions or comments and suggestions and that. So every year we keep trying something different, and every year it gets better. So I'm just going to keep going and keep tweaking it and see how good we can get our production going. Good thing I cut all the runners off of here. I didn't realize how bad these guys were leaning over here. I mean, if we don't do something here soon, these guys are going to topple over. I know some of the other ones, Doug has a guide wire going up to the um, trusses up there to hold them in place. So I think he's going to have to do that. And the other thing I found as I was sweeping up, these little buggers, look what they did. They got down here and rooted themselves. I got little strawberry plants growing through my plastic where it dripped down and got wet and they were able to root themselves. So look at all these runners I pulled off of the short section, one little section. A lot of foliage here, a lot of energy needed to produce all this foliage and to keep it going, a lot of waste of nutrients. I need to follow my own advice and keep the runners cut off so I get better production of my strawberries. So here's the other part of the jungle, the uh, peppers and the paste tomatoes. So Doug's going to help me go through and pick the good peppers out and the good paste tomatoes so he can do some sauce for me. And we're going to clean these out and do a deep clean, not a deep clean, but a clean for the high tunnel here and see how we can get the strawberry production up since the weather's cool and it's going to be nice and sunny here in the fall and see if I can get back up to 25, 30 pounds of harvest. So I hope you guys liked today's video on the high tunnel here and everything I got going on in here and like always leave me any questions, comments, or suggestions down below. Next video I'm going to do is the one I promised you about the beto buckets, get them emptied out, cleaned out, and redone again so I can put my paste tomatoes in there. So I'll see you guys next video.